Hello friends, it's Jordan and welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you a very overdue video. This is going to be my December reading wrap up and my January reading wrap up. Granted January is only going to be about a week late but December is hella late. Basically I took a break, an unintentional break from reading and booktube and Instagram and pretty much everything for over a month. Hopefully the plans I have for February will bring me out of this slump. I have so many books that I want to read, so many things are coming out right now and I just don't want to read any of them. Like I do, but like I don't at the same time. I'm going to just wrap up everything that I've read over the last two months, deem myself caught up and then I can proceed into February on a regular schedule, hopefully. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video because I have lots of things to talk about. I'm gonna try to do this concisely and with as little words as possible. She says, hopefully, we'll see if it's executed in the same manner. So the first book that I finished in December was Little White Lies by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the first book in her new debutante series. So it's about this young girl who is raised by a single mother and then her grandma just kind of appears out of nowhere, tells her that she's from a very wealthy Southern family, kind of blackmails her in a way to get her to participate in the upcoming debutante season. But there's also flash forwards to present time when Sawyer and her three best friends are locked in a jail cell. And you're trying to figure out why they're locked in a jail cell. I have read Jennifer Lynn Barnes' other books. I've read The Fixer by her as well as The Naturals and I've loved everything that I've read by her. I really like her YA mystery novels. They're like the best YA mystery novels that I've read because YA mystery can be a tough genre to do well. I felt a lot like Gilmore Girls meets Pretty Little Liars, like that's how it was pitched and marketed. I feel like that's a very accurate description of how the book feels. I really enjoyed the first book and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. After this, we segue into my Smutathon reading wrap up. First thing that I read for Smutathon was The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. It's the first book I've ever read by Tessa Dare. Well, my feet are hot and taking my socks off. Emma, and she's a seamstress and she's sewing this dress for the Duke's upcoming wedding. Well, the Duke's wedding falls through. No one comes to collect the dress or give her payment for it. So she puts it on, storms up to his castle and demands payment. And he's like, well, shit, I really need a wife. And you're standing there in a wedding dress. So let's do this thing. It kind of reminded me a lot of Beauty and the Beast. I'm a beast and no one will love me. You can't see me in the light. Let's, you know, sit in the dark. I don't typically like historical romance because I don't like the way that women are expected to behave in historical romance novels, but I felt like this one was a much more progressive for what it is. I mean, it's written in 2017. This was not my favorite book that I read during the marathon, but I still really enjoyed it. And I do plan to read the upcoming books in the series. I ended up giving this a 3.75 out of five stars. The next book was Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. If you watched my Smutathon vlog, you know I read this in an afternoon, which never ever ever happens for me and I loved it to pieces. I love Josh and Hazel's relationship. I like their friendship and their relationship because they were just so cute together. Two characters who knew of each other in college but the main female character Hazel kind of really embarrassed herself in front of Josh and ruined any potential forthcoming relationship between them. She reminds me very much so of Jessica Day from New Girl. Several years later, they reconnect. They decide to set each other up on all of these blind dates. They always end up going home together. Cutest, most adorable thing, and I love it so much, and I loved their relationship, and I loved the ending. Some people don't relate the ending. It is a certain trope that if you're not fond of, you're not gonna like the ending, but I didn't mind it, and I loved the ending. I just loved the whole thing, and this was definitely one of my favorite books of 2018. Gave it a five out of five stars, obviously. So the next book that I finished in December was my one Christmas book that I read and that was The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. This is a very popular, beloved Christmas book on booktube. I follow Holly who is a Scrooge and she's 17 years old and the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future come to her one year and try to get her to change her ways and tell her if she doesn't, she will die. And she's basically like, this is a hoax. Y'all think I'm real stupid, 
I'm not listening to you. And then she dies. And she gets recruited into this program, this afterlife program called Project Scrooge. She becomes the new Ghost of Christmas Past. And this particular year, it's a young boy who is 17 years old and she starts to fall for him. And she's really going above and beyond and kind of out of the bounds of her company's policies to prevent this character's death. It's really like Holly's journey of being a Scrooge and being a part of this program that she doesn't really like believe in and then seeing her believe in it and seeing her turn her life around and I really liked the ending. I really think that Holly had a great developmental arc. I loved like the personification of Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Like it's not just a retelling. It's like this analysis of the book. If you like A Christmas Carol, I'd highly recommend reading this because I think you would really like the comparisons. Really enjoyed this. I don't love it as much as a lot of other people do. I do think it's a really fun Christmas book. It's a different Christmas book. It's a different approach. Approach. I gave it a four out of five stars. The next two books that I read were also like smutathon books. First one was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, which is a very popular romance book on booktube. It's an adult romance book following a character that has autism. They say in the book she has Asperger's. She really just doesn't understand romance. So she hires a male escort, asks him to teach her the ways of a boyfriend girlfriend relationship dynamic and it is the cutest thing ever i loved michael i loved the way that michael was with stella and i loved being in stella's head and learning all about the way that she sees the world it's so different from how i experience the world can't wait for her next book the bride test that comes out later this year and i think it's a companion to this book it follows one of michael's like cousins or brothers or something who also is diagnosed with autism so cute and so perfect and I really loved this one. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And the final book that I read in December was Hate to Want You by Alicia Rye. This is the first book in the Forbidden Hearts trilogy. All these two characters whose grandfathers founded this grocery store together and then over time one of the families, Livy's family, was totally bought out, totally pushed aside. Because of that, these two main characters, Nick and Livy, don't speak anymore. They had a relationship when they were younger, but then this fallout pushed them apart. And they only see each other once a year on Livy's birthday. But this particular year, Livy does not go to see Nick. It was so emotional and like heart-wrenching, sexy and romantic all at the same time. And I loved these two characters together and I'm super excited to continue reading the series. Really enjoyed this and I gave it a four out of five stars. And that's all I read in December. So let's go ahead and talk about January where I read three books and just burped. The first book I finished in January was Love, Life, and the List by Casey West. It's my first Casey West book. And I found it to be like a pretty average, cute, YA contemporary romance. I understand why people who love Casey West love Casey West, and I could see why she's so popular, but I found this to be just like a pretty average, fun, easy to read contemporary. We follow this main character, Abby, who is an artist, and she's trying to get into this really exclusive summer art program. The guy running the art convention basically tells her that she doesn't have enough experience. She goes on this summer quest to try to give her life more meaning and more depth and to give herself more personal experiences so that she could draw from those to create more meaningful emotional art. And the way she ropes in her best friend Cooper to these tasks as well. Spending a whole summer alone together on all these wild adventures brings up a lot of old feelings that Abby's having and makes her question a lot of things that Cooper is doing. Things happen, it's a YA romance, you can probably figure out the rest of the storyline from there. It was a very cute, fun summer YA contemporary and it was exactly what I expected it to be. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was a huge disappointment and that was I Know You Know by Jillian McMillan. It was a thriller that I was super looking forward to. I listened to it on audiobooks. It has a podcast element so I thought it would be really well suited for audio. And I did not like this book because what is the point of this book exactly? No idea. I follow this guy Cody who is doing a podcast looking into the deaths of his two childhood best friends, Charlie and Scott. Charlie and Scott's deaths were solved back in the day. Some news leaked 
that it might not have been him and Cody really wants to reopen the case. So he starts this podcast. Then you're also following the police detectives who seem like really shady, awful people. A mystery is solved. It's solved so quickly and like stated in the breath of a sentence that if you're not paying attention, you will totally miss it. And then it rolls right into this really weird plot that Cody put together. We also follow the perspective of one of the boy's moms who was a teenage mother and has like a lot of really shady things in her past and so she's meant to be kind of portrayed as like a shady character but she ends up solving the crime. Not even Cody. She solves her son's crime and then just like rolls right into this whole thing about Cody and the podcast and I did not understand the point. I didn't get it. I don't know if I missed something I don't know if it's because I listened to the audiobook and I should have read it. Maybe I would have understood things better. I don't really know, but I thought it was awful and I really did not like this book, which is ironic because it was rated so highly by Lala from Books and Lala. And I trust her thriller recommendations, but like this did not work for me. I gave it a two out of five stars. So after this, I listened to Sadie by Courtney Summers because I was like, that thriller podcast audiobook didn't work for me. Let's try this thriller podcast audiobook instead. Why thriller, murder mystery following this girl Sadie whose younger sister Maddie is murdered and she goes on this revenge quest trying to find the person who murdered Maddie and exact her revenge. This one I liked significantly better then I know you know. I liked the podcast element better. I just wasn't buying that anybody would listen to the I Know You Know podcast because it was so boring. I found this mystery to be much more thrilling, much more compelling. It reminded me a lot of The Female of the Species and The Accidental Bad Girl, two books that I both really enjoyed. Everybody says that like, the ending is very open-ended. I felt it was pretty obvious. I don't feel like it's up for much of interpretation. I feel like it's subtly, but also blatantly said what happens at the end of this book. I feel like the way it's said is done in the perfect way for the story. It is a little open-ended feeling, a little unclear, a little ominous, and I feel like that fits the tone of the book perfectly, but I also feel like Courtney Summers does tell you what happens with Sadie and her revenge quest at the end of this book. I also thought the audiobook was super well done. It's read by Rebecca Soler, who was one of my favorite narrators. She does all of Marissa Meyer's books and she's just really freaking talented. Gave it a four out of five stars. That is it. Those are all of the books that I read in the months of December and January. If you've also read any of these books, tell me in the comments down below. If you want any specific year end wrap up type of videos from me, let me know and I will film those for you again in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.